Teachers, um, mathematics educators, researchers, postgraduate students, and so on. Uh, it's, a, it's an important um, uh, uh, workshop, this one. And I, I really think we should not forget where we come from. Where we come from, talking about learner support materials or textbooks in multiple languages, so in two languages, uh, was an unthinkable. And it's just amazing that we got here. And so we should keep focused in terms of where we're going. And given where we are at the moment, it just shows the power of research when it works with practice. Because when we bring research with practice, then we use the findings that we have to say what do they mean for practice given what we have. I'm sure you realize that we got to the point of where we are at because research in South Africa led in this area of um, uh, teaching and learning in multilingual classrooms. And, and in fact, research started with looking at what is the problem, almost like trying to understand the problem, looking through into the uh, black box and saying, what is really going on? And, and um, the work that was done in that area uh, by uh, Jill Adler, I think she was groundbreaking, her work was groundbreaking in this regard. It helped us understand what's in there. The work grew, and then um, uh, with the work that I did and many others, and we then asked, once we've tried to, we've been in many multilingual classrooms to see what teachers are doing and trying to understand it and describing it, we then asked, um, uh, now that we can see what, 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 what is going on, the challenges that learners are facing and teachers are facing in teaching learners who are not fluent in their own languages, what do we do? What is possible? What is it that we can do? What, what could be? We started asking what could be. All right, what should it be? And that's when we started exploring interventions. And that's when I came with the idea of multilingual approach to teaching and learning. And we've been making that, that uh, argument for the need for a multilingual approach to mathematics teaching and learning. And that multilingual approach mainly is based on the idea that language, as much as it is a, is a tool for learning and thinking and communicating, it, it, it is much more than that. It is political, and that is the reason why, even though we've got progressive policy, we've got research that backs teaching in multiple languages, the reason why there's no take up on the ground is because language is political. People want that which will give them access to things, goods that they want access to. Parents want that, teachers want that for their learners, and learners want that for themselves. And that's why English then becomes a place to go to. Now, if you want people, young people, to get access to both English and mathematics, it's interesting because at this point, um, I, would, I want to argue that even at this point in our country, there's still not necessarily an appreciation of mathematics as a social good. Uh, English is recognized as a social good. People can talk at length about how English gives you access to things, whether it's jobs, whether it's social status, whether it's um, even getting just the flat because you speak English and sometimes there are assumptions that go with that. And mathematics is not yet recognized by many as a social good that we should actually prioritize, right? And, and so this approach of using multiple languages even in the um, um, uh, written materials for students, for pupils, for learners, is it comes from that understanding that because English gives access to social goods, and we want children to have access to mathematics, it's better to bring the, the two together and teach in two languages, but also have written materials in two languages. The language of the learner and the language that the learner wants access to. We don't have to beat about the bush. It doesn't matter what we want the learners to have access to. They want access to English, and so we have to make it available because this is a political need 
to survive in our world of today. But we bring their home language as a support and they don't have to declare themselves. Now, what we have, the reason, the power of having it is uh, textbooks or any, on any written material that learners have is that they don't have to declare and say, I don't understand this language or I don't understand the other. They can just draw on the language that they need uh, at that point in time. Uh, uh, they can do that in Zulu and in English, wherever, whenever they, they need. That, in my view, is support that we need that says having language policy that's progressive is important, but it's not sufficient to ensure that learners are supported in their learning of mathematics. We need pedagogies that recognize the political role of language and the fact that if we want children to access the power of mathematics, we should bring the political role of, 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 of language in the space uh, to make the power of mathematics available. Now, my dream is that one day all the textbooks that are all the mathematics textbooks that are sold in our country are printed at least in two languages. In two languages, when I buy a textbook, I can decide am I buying a, an English Zulu, English Benda, or English Tswana, or whatever. It doesn't matter what school I am in. I think that has to be a standard practice. And that can only be if we lobby government to make this a requirement for publishers. This we need because we are a multilingual country. We are a multilingual people. And here's the thing, the world is multilingual. And we can lead the world into a place that recognizes that bilingual education, multilingual education should not just stop at describing the learners as additional language learners or getting support for them ad hoc support for them when they are in class. We can have that in the textbooks. Now, you can, I, I know that sometimes this is seen as a, a, a something that's suitable for learners who are struggling. This is not about struggle. This is about um, a, a actually people whose strengths are in two language uh, uh, areas, language practices, and therefore, they can have the textbook in multiple languages. Uh, I always make a difference between a, a, a multilingual or a bilingual and a monolingual. That, you know, until the day we recognize that a bilingual is not a sum of two uh, complete or incomplete monolinguals, um, we will never respect multilingualism, or multilingual is not a sum of two or more complete or incomplete monolinguals. That in fact, a multilingual is like a high headler who blends multiple competencies. Um, and if you're a headler, you blend high jumping and sprinting. You can't compete with the sprinter, and neither can you compete with the high jumper, uh, because you blend the two competencies. And that's what bilinguals and multilinguals, that's what we are. And so when we bring written materials in multiple languages in this way, it's recognized this core existence and constant interaction of the many languages in the, in the multi, that, 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 that has produced a different but complete language system in a multilingual. We need a system that, that recognizes that, an exam system, that, a policy that recognizes that, textbooks that recognizes that. And I'm glad that the community is growing and we have this group that says mathematics is important. If you want to teach high level mathematics, give high co cognitive demand tasks in a mathematics class, you need language support and giving language support in writing. And as we speak, it's also important. This doesn't. This support actually even teachers who are not fluent in all the official languages of South Africa. Because if children have the textbooks, um, you don't have to, to 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 try to mediate and wonder whether what they are trying to to tell each other about what the question is asking is right or wrong. Because there it is in their home languages. 
So thank you for the work that you do. Thank you to Ingrid for leading the charge right now and for amazing work that you 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 you, you do out there. Um, I wish I could be there and engage with you all day, but of course, the world um, uh, demands uh, more for the few of us who are employed in this um, uh, uh, environment of high unemployment. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me, and I wish you everything of the best. Uh, it will be great to see what comes out, but I'm sure it will be even better many years from now when we look back and say, what did that produce? What are those learners, foundation-faced learners that we are working with? How did what we got at that workshop set them, uh, 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 set them up for success? So everything of the best with the workshop. Thank you. Thank you, Katie.